Hello, this is Craig, and I'd like to talk about law. Uh, this is a bit of a tired topic right now, especially since I'm talking about copyright and patent law, but I think you'll find my take on it as a little bit interesting, so I'll dive straight into it. Most of the laws we have today are what I call exclusionary laws. An exclusionary law says that the default is you can't. Let's say that Susie, she farms an apple, so she has an apple. She gets an apple from somewhere, legally. Now, on the other hand, uh, Annie over here, she'd like an apple, so what can she do? Well, the exclusionary law specifically says you can't take Susie's apple. Susie can give it to you, she can share it with you, she can sell it to you, um, but you can't take it, because if you take it, Susie doesn't have an apple anymore. So the default is you may not. Now, this, ex uh, this is most of our, our current day laws are like this. You may not, by default, you may not do a million things. And that's fine when there is something specific that will get uh, removed or stolen when you act. This, is, uh, it, this actually goes uh, and, and works very well when you start to do things like t-shirts. So, for example, let's say that you are Disney and you own Mickey Mouse. And you are selling Disney t-shirts what the copyright, or in this case trademark, gives you is it gives you the advantage of entering this market, this healthy market, with the stuff that you have done in other markets or in your head. Anyone else who tries to sell Mickey t-shirts will get in trouble because they don't have the permission to use your goods. But it's a healthy market. These people could sell whatever they wanted. They don't have to sell Mickey t-shirts. They could sell Charlie Brown style t-shirts, um, assuming they don't actually infringe copyright there. Uh, you know, they could sell Happy Face t-shirts. I don't think anyone owns the Happy Face. They could sell whatever they'd like. They're allowed to participate in this healthy market. And when it comes to clothes, the market is quite healthy and there's very few alternatives. A few people make their own clothes, but by and large, there are no alternatives. You're going to be buying clothes. Maybe you won't buy t-shirts, but you'll be buying some kind of clothes. And that means that participating in this healthy market with an advantage allows you to get some profit out while still being a net positive participant. You are making the market healthier by selling a decent product to people who want it. So the exclusionary law here isn't that nobody else may sell t-shirts. It's that nobody else may sell t-shirts using your particular uh, property because that would be uh, essentially taking money from you that you could have gained. Now exclusionary law gets a little bit shaky when you start to talk about things which can be duplicated infinitely such as songs. Now it used to be that if you were selling songs you were actually selling them um, on a physical device and there was a cost to this and there were no real alternatives if you wanted to listen to the song, you had to go buy the record, you had to go buy the tape, you had to go buy the CD, um, or listen to it on the radio. This started to falter when magnetic tape uh, became easy enough to use that everyone started to tape their stuff and create mixtapes. And later, of course, we got the internet and DVD writers and peer-to-peer, -peer, and it completely fell apart. Now, the rules and regulations were written for these guys. Actually, technically speaking, they were written for probably the generation before these guys. The essence is the, cop the copyright protection, for music at least, is specifically for the idea that you will be able to sell your songs, you will be able to provide them for your people, your uh, audience, and no one else can do that with your songs, although they are freely allowed to sell whatever other music they would like or whatever other things on the same kinds of disc. You know, the exclusion here is that they're not allowed access to your material. This fell apart when the material became free to distribute. Now we can talk about whether someone has a moral right to 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 contain their own intellectual property, whether they are allowed to prevent it from being used. They certainly have a legal right to, at least at the moment, but um, I won't try and argue whether there's a moral right or a legal right. Instead, I will try and argue that there is another option, and it's worth thinking about. Instead of exclusionary law, we could do inclusionary law. Think about it like this. 
An artist makes music. What does the artist want? The artist probably wants people to hear the song. And lots of happy people hearing the song. But he also wants to pay his mortgage. Now, at the moment, we have these things as opposing factors in our culture. We, we, we've come up with this idea that they are opposite, that more people hearing it is, in fact, going to make you less money because they're all pirates. Um, now, you can say, well, there are a lot of people listening to it that are paying money, uh, but the fact of the matter is most people who are listening to your song have not paid you money to listen to it this time. They paid you money once upon a time uh, to get access, and now they have infinite access, or they didn't pay you any money at all. Um, the con there is no connection between these. They are only connected in our own little minds uh, because of the culture we've built. So if we presume that the point of music or any kind of product really is to give it to is to have as many people as possible use it and to make money, we can consider those separately. We don't have to say that these two are linked. We don't have to say that the more people listen, the more money you get, or vice versa. Instead, we can say, well, what happens when we want people to distribute this song, and how are we going to make money off of it? The price of distributing music is very, very low, very close to zero, but it's almost, uh, it's much more expensive to get the audience to listen to your distribution. So if you make a song, and you try and distribute it, and you've only got like maybe 10 people listening to you, but if it gets picked up by uh, a major... Uh, you know, Reddit or something, they can get trillions, oh, trillions of hits. Um, a couple hundred thousand people, I imagine. <laughs> but this redistributor makes your music much more popular. And I'm talking about music, but it could be anything. Uh, anything data. Right now, we are saying, this guy, we don't want him. We don't want him to give away this music. And the law protects that. It says, well, okay, he can't. What if we had a law that said he could? Well, how would that help a musician make money? Well, it wouldn't help him make money, but it wouldn't hurt him from making money either. All of these people are currently listening to his song, and there's absolutely no reason why the law couldn't be much less aggressive and say, well, you know, you can link, but you have to make sure you link back. Now, this is just one example of a law that says, you can if you. So the idea that you can distribute anyone's music as long as you give a, a link to them directly or so on and so forth, all of this allows us to take all of this audience and give away all of our stuff to them for free and point them at us. Now what we do with the audience that's been pointed to us, that's a topic for another time, but there's a lot of ways you can make money off of that. At the very least, you could run ads. At the, uh, if you're a musician, you could sell swag, um, you know, concerts, all sorts of ways that you can make money off of this crowd. And the idea is the larger the crowd, the more money you'll end up making. So we could talk about the idea of an inclusionary law. Instead of saying, thou shalt not, we could say, please do if. Here's another example of an inclusionary law. Let's say that you've got a patent. You've got a patent for a specific manner of doing really, really cool 3D printing. And so you can, you've got this machine that can build these really cool 3D models of anything you'd like, um, or anything anyone would like. Now, that patent right now is an exclusionary patent. It says that nobody else can build this machine. Nobody else can sell this machine. It's your machine. You, you're the only people who can do anything with it. Um, unfortunately, your ability to do something with it is very limited. Unless you are one of the very few people who owns a corporation, um, you're going to be very limited. You're going to be maybe producing a couple hundred of these. Uh, it's going to be a long, long trek until you're producing enough to meet what could be the demand. And, of course, along the way, you're going to have to drum up all of this demand by yourself. What if instead of saying, no, you can't make my product, what if the law said, yeah, anyone can build this machine. Anyone can build this machine as long as they... as long as they what? 
maybe as long as they pay 1% of retail, maybe as long as they pay a specific lump sum. I don't know. The idea here is that it's possible to create an inclusionary law which really, really helps out. The person who develops it, the person who creates all of the um, research, all of the development, all of the original builds, can make money off of what he's done without requiring everyone else to stand still for the rest of the decade while he sits on his thumbs. What happens if we have a machine with 85 patents in it? What do we do then? What if we've got, like, you know, laser discs and, and weird cool stuff and painting that's automatic and a laser cutter too? And what do we do if we've got this machine with 18 different pieces that are all patented? Well, I mean, I, I don't want to say I've got all of the answers, but if you pay 1% of retail value for everything, even if you've got 50 patents, all you have to do is pump up your retail price by by 100% and you'll still make quite a profit. So all of these might add up to a big chunk of retail. 20% of retail value perhaps for 20 different patents that you're using. But that's still manageable. You can still increase your price. And if a pirate comes in and starts to sell it without paying this 20%, that's what the law comes in for. The law comes in, forces him to pay it, and blows it away. You know, if you don't pay it, you are illegal. That's just one of, of many different ideas, uh, m many different ways that it could go. But the core idea here is that we have a lot of people on this planet. I'm not even going to try and draw, um, you know, 8 billion people. Uh, I don't know why I started to. But um, with all of the people on this planet, right now there are too many thou shalt not, thou shalt not laws. As if person A over here in America came up with something that person B over here in China couldn't come up with. Yeah, right. I don't think that there is a. I don't think that there is any chance that there is a, a, a. The majority of ideas do not come out of nowhere. The majority of ideas come out of a building process, where a whole bunch of people down here have said a whole bunch of other things, and you say, "Oh, yeah, of course." And then this guy over here. He might say, yeah, oh yeah, of course, he's not stealing it from you, he just came up with the same idea. Now, if you were first, that, that's worth something. If you're first, you should be able to make money off of that, or, or as much money as there is to be made off of that. There might not be very much, depending on your, on your idea. But that doesn't mean that you have the right to say, you guys can't do it. You guys can't do anything. You guys have to go sit down and be lumps. You're not allowed to help, you, you're not allowed to help the world advance because I own this and I am a dickhole. That's just wrong. That's just bad policy. There are enough people out there that want to build what you have invented that you should give them that right. And if you can make money while doing that, why not? Why not create inclusionary laws? Why not drive humanity forward? and make money doing it. Personally, I think it's immoral to tell 99.9999999999% of humanity that they can't do something because you thought of it. That's just really, really bad. Instead, you should be saying, all of you guys can do this because I've thought of it. I have figured out how to do it. Please do it. Um, you know, give me a little bit in exchange because I earned it, but please, go ahead do it.